Hi, I'm Matilda Goad and this is how I live with style. I moved to this home four years ago with my husband and I now share it with my two small children who are three and one. We did a couple of months of renovations initially and then over the past few years, like with every home, we've been altering and adjusting to the ever-growing family. So this is the kitchen of my home and I guess for a London terrace it's a little bit rare for it to be in the front of the house but also it gets this really beautiful morning light. And I love the proportions and scale of this room. One thing I knew when I kind of was designing this kitchen space is that I didn't want to have a full sort of fitted kitchen as such. And I really liked the idea of mixing in a few bits of furniture that kind of broke up the traditional kitchen layer, I guess. This table here, which kind of serves as, I guess, a bit of a kitchen island. It's where I, I kind of chop have pots and pans. At the moment, it's this French bistro table. Um, but I've had previously a kind of old wooden butcher's block. I do kind of believe in these placeholders almost until you fall upon the perfect piece. This table I picked up at Sunbury Antiques. I really like that it's got this curve to it and it sort of breaks up a lot of the angles. I love scallops and how I started with my products. I love the gentle curves that break up the often angular corners. I ended up adding this splashback. I had a really low little splashback here that was completely impractical and after six months and um, loads of washing up liquid and oil up the back of the sink, decided to add on this higher splashback. You know, I think now looking at it, it adds a really nice bit of character to the room. One thing I felt very instinctual about the kitchen layout was housing the oven within this existing chimney breast. And it sort of felt like it was made for it. And I'd seen a reference of a Moroccan kitchen, which the, all the surrounds of the oven were covered in these checkerboard tiles. And these are just from a builder's merchant, but I love this kind of deep red that I use quite a lot throughout the home. It's sort of almost like a nail varnish red and I guess it's a bit of a focal point in the kitchen without it feeling too obvious. Another piece that really cemented the kitchen, I was at a market, an antique market outside London called Arvinglai at the beginning of the renovation and I was kind of going back to the car at the end of the day a little bit empty handed and this cabinet was almost at the exit, kind of in puddles, in mud and there was something about it that I was really drawn to. I love that it's actually not that deep, but it's kind of got this unique design. I love this detail here. Surprisingly, it actually houses a lot of stuff, and I have quite a big glass collection. Lots of trinkets and little bits I pick up at flea markets. I lined it in this wallpaper from Hal, and it's just a really nice detail that you kind of don't even really see until you get closer. I am always drawn to gold glassware. Whenever I see it in a flea market or junk shop or when I'm traveling, I kind of have to get it. It's just filled with so many different memories and pieces and quite a few pieces from my brand, Matilda Goad. We're a homeware brand of lots of accessories and it's often pieces that I feel I can't find. When I was designing the kitchen, I really wanted to house the table in the bay window. Having this oval table, you know, it's actually really effective with space. I think I've had about 16 people around this table and everyone can cram in, but equally, you know, it doesn't feel lonely if it's just me sitting here having dinner by myself. So when I was kind of designing the bonquette, it was one of the things I really wanted to have, almost like sofa cushions. I really like mixing up unexpected materials. And denim is something that, you know, it's a good price point compared to a lot of fabrics. And I've used a contrast piping here, so it really makes it pop. It's also a really functional material. I mean, I've got two small kids and these are always in the washing machine. On the windows here, I've used a print from a brand called Lake August and it's on nasturtiums. Growing up in the countryside, I always remember eating the flowers and I've actually have a few growing in my garden in the summertime here. I love those stories that you have behind interiors. I think that's what really makes a home really feel like a home. I'd seen a really great reference of these swing seats in a 
restaurant in Japan. So I sourced the hardware and got it shipped over and added a sort of vintage seat. And they're just a really great use of space. So this is the sitting room, which sits at the back of my house and it leads out onto the garden. I really wanted this room to be really light and bright and airy. Because there's so many different things that have come from my travels and materials and textures and colours, I chose to keep the canvas of the room very neutral. So there's bare wood floorboards, kind of a relatively neutral walls and ceiling. I set about trying to find a lovely desk to have at home. and. I ended up finding this, it's actually a vintage Ikea that I found on a Swedish auction site. Placed the bid, didn't really think much more. And then it came to the part of shipping and trying to get an acacia wood desk after Brexit into England. Um, so six months later, having got a permit, it arrived um, on my door outside and I sort of realized I hadn't measured the door width. So there was a lot of back and forth. It sort of almost went through my neighbors and over the wall outside. We sort of looked at all the solutions and then we actually realized that it's really beautifully made and is keyed together. So the legs came off and we managed to get it in. I like things to be contained, not to get dusty. And I sort of really struggle with photo frames in that sense. So I decided to put up this photo shelf which means that it can kind of have an ever-evolving a range of photos and little notes and drawings by my kids. I sort of think it works really well when you condense things together in this way. So this um, day bed was actually one of the first pieces of furniture I bought when I moved into the house. I love when the sun is shining and you kind of get the sun hitting here, reading a book and I love, it's such a unique design in that you can go fully day bed and it goes both ways and it's so unique. You know, I love products and objects that have these kind of differences. When we were thinking about designing this room, we added a porthole window over there. I actually was quite against it initially. I thought it could go down the sort of faux nautical route but my husband was very adamant that he wanted it because you get the eye line through to the kitchen via the outside area. So this space here used to be a very small bathroom and a bedroom next to it. And when we were looking at expanding and building out the loft upstairs, I really thought through whether we really needed this space and although on paper I feel like any estate agent would say that having an extra bathroom was a great thing I really felt like it was much more valuable space to create an area where my kids could play. I played around with a few different scenarios and kind of came into this setup of having a built-in bonquette with a toy cupboard here with the tv and then lots of storage all around and because it's on the landing we needed with my children to have a safety gate so we built this gate that comes out the back of the toy cupboard and it's really pleasing and you sort of lock it in like this and it's I think it's like really aesthetically pleasing we chose to do it in this sort of tomato red and it sort of ties the whole room together and then this vintage bamboo unit I actually only found recently and it literally fits within about an inch of its life from the stair gate. But I really like that the marriage between something quite old here with the new joinery. And I always think within a room, it's like having this mix of eras and styles really add a character to a room. So my bedroom upstairs, I really wanted to be a very calm space. I actually painted the walls and the wardrobes all the same paint. And then the curtains are my favorite color at the moment, this kind of buttery yellow. I just love that pairing of colors together. I love these little clover back plates that I put on to this unit that I got at Kempton Market. This lamp here, this giant tall sunflag, I bought this in a giant flea market in Lille. I went with my friend Laura and we went off in her van. She was actually the one who pointed it out and was like, you have to get this, it's so you. 
I think lighting in general is, you know, so important. I was in Stockholm earlier this year and I had been given a list of some antique shops to go to. And one of them was this amazing shop that was crammed with lots of sort of crockery and kitchenware. And high up on one of the shelves was this painting. I just loved all the colors. We actually had to take it outside the shop to look at the colors because it was so dark there at that time of year anyway. Shipping it was gonna be sort of five times the cost of this cheap painting. So I checked it in on the plane as oversized luggage and bound it up in loads of blankets and it's here. My wardrobes which line one side of my bedroom, I chose to paint in the same finish and colour as all of the walls because I wanted it to be quite harmonious. But I added in these cane panels. I like having that kind of juxtaposition with the more modern pieces and the shiny chromes and brasses. But it's something that I, I feel is really important, not only because it's so tactile, but it's like such a small thing that doesn't need to cost much, which can totally transform wardrobes or a space is hardware and it's something that we do at my brand and something we're growing. I just feel like you can add so much character by way of a handle or a knob and it's a really easy way to instantly update a space and to add a bit of a different personality. Through here is my bathroom. There is a sink which I found in an antique shop in Arundel actually. In, in very in the early stages of my renovation I saw it and it's quite unique in that it's got quite a lot of space each side and it's standalone. I couldn't quite work out how to frame the window. I saw a reference of a really beautiful wicker pelmet and I'd been working with a willow maker on a different project for work. So she set about weaving over a metal frame. Quite a simple white roller blind underneath, but I added that scallop underneath again because it just creates a bit of interest with your eye line. And I'm really pleased with how it works. If your bathroom allows it, I think having a few pictures, photos, makes a more cozy atmosphere in a bathroom rather than being quite sterile. And I've got two botanical paintings by a wonderful artist called Mariella Baldwin that I was given. I love them being there. When the light hits them, it's so beautiful. It sort of just adds another character to the bathroom. We're up in the loft of my house and this is my three-year-old daughter's room. I remember being a child, the kind of novelties and the things that I found really appealing and that sense of things being a little bit magical. Having a built-in bed felt like it was a kind of given and we should do that in order to maximize the space. Actually, underneath here, it's, um, it's a trunk bed. So there's another single mattress down here. And it's kind of fun. I like the idea when she's a little bit older, her friends can come over, you pull the bed out. Um, I've slept her a few nights and she thinks it's really fun. And it's that sort of element of fun and imagination as a child. The wallpaper here is a Joseph Frank wallpaper that I've always loved and have always wanted to use somewhere. And I think in a funny space with pokey walls and irregular slopes, wallpaper is really, it works really well. When we were doing the building work, it was kind of quite a last minute decision, but we echoed the porthole window that exists in the sitting room. So I think having that aspect out, which lines up with the window in the bathroom, you kind of get that eye line outside. The bathroom next door, I decided to add lots of different tiles and to cover the walls and floors. It kind of makes it a very practical space. Thank you so much for following around today. I hope you enjoyed it. I need to go and do my kids' bath time now, but don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Times Style YouTube channel.